Gracias. Uh, thank you, everyone, for being here today. This is our 12th Barcelona lecture, and the second one we hold since it was decided to get the activities of the CREA network to be associated with the research program of the Barcelona Graduate School of Economics. And it is therefore significant that our speaker today is the president of this uh, Barcelona GSE Scientific Council that is going to meet next Saturday for the first time. Accepting this task, that of president of the Scientific Council, is only the most recent of the many actions through which Hugo Sonnenschein has continuously given support to the development of economics in Spain. He met the first Spanish graduate students that arrived to Minnesota in the late 60s, where, where he was a very young professor. Actually, he wrote a paper with one of them, Andreu Mascolell, which was, if I'm not mistaken, the first of Andreu's published papers, not the last. Then uh, he moved to Northwestern University, where Isabel Fradera, Javier Ruiz Castilla, and myself were lucky to have him as dissertation advisor. He later went to Princeton, where he favored the arrival of many graduate students, including our former Minister of Education, Maria Jesus San Segundo. From the early 70s, Hugo started visiting the Autonoma, but also Madrid and Bilbao, got to know about the ambitions <coughs> we had for Spanish economics, provided advice and support in many ways, and I cannot think of anyone else in the profession who has followed the adventure of Spanish economic research so closely with a friendlier eye and with so much care as he has. This is in part because Hugo is a most dear friend. That makes it hard for me to introduce him because sometimes familiarity can get in the way of realizing how large is the personality that uh, we have uh, among us. His contributions to economics are in the books and range from the study of individual and aggregate demand to general equilibrium to mechanism design. He's among uh, a small number of economists who contributed to the completion of the ambitious program of general <coughs> equilibrium theory and then went on to pave the way to favor the development of economics into the complex set of models, approaches, and research directions that we have today by opening the door of the old temple and letting game theory, incentives, and expectations in as an integral part of our tools and concerns. He has also held the highest responsibilities as an academic administrator. He was the president of the University of Chicago, and he keeps attached to different educational foundations. Before I ask him to speak, let me say that where he becomes legendary is when you turn to his role as a teacher. <coughs> Generations of students at the different places where he has served help in maintaining the legend, which is not a legend, but just the truth. He constantly challenges his students without crushing them, stimulates without overwhelming, leads to great problems by just opening new territory with deceivingly simple questions. The list of his students, especially during the Princeton years, reads as a who's who of economic theory. Today he'll talk about his recent research on issues of international trade. And thank you, Hugo, for the gift of being here. Thank you for that most gracious introduction. I I'm afraid you have a rather, uh, not ill, but with a bad cold version of uh, Hugo Sonnenschein, and I apologize for that, and I will try and speak as clearly as I can and um, be as clear as I, I can. Um, you know, it's impossible to imagine crushing the strong collection of graduate students that I've had, especially those from um, Catalonia, um, starting at Minnesota. This, this bank has a strong connection uh, with uh, Minnesota and its president. And uh, I've just, uh, over many years, have made many friends in this part of the world. And I've watched with the greatest pleasure the development of economics in Barcelona, in Catalonia, and in Spain. 
and the leadership role of my friends and my former students is a source of, of great pride, really the greatest pride for me. Uh, with the bringing together of the Catalan economics community behind the Barcelona Graduate School of Economics, I'm convinced that we are witnessing a special moment. And it's an honor to share that moment with you. I recall other special moments here. Uh, the first open meeting of the Socialist Party, which I believe was held in a, in a bull ring that I went to with friends. It was, it was a, a stadium. It was held in the stadium when I, when I was here. I asked, and I was, that, you know, the, the energy and the excitement made uh, where I was very secondary. So what's going on right now is really, is really like that. I'm going to speak on two themes. Uh, I, I try not to overdo my stays, and my talks are usually not very long, but in this case, with my cold, I'm going to perhaps make it even shorter. Uh, and um, the two themes that I'm going to speak about, you now have this up in front of you, um, are really simple reductionist models of economic equilibrium and what we can learn from them. That's one of the themes. I'm going to talk about that um, with an example. And with a particular awareness to the differences between individual choice and the intuitions that you get from individual choice and problems of social equilibrium. Now, very often, individual rational choice is a bad um, intuition for what will happen in terms of a whole social equilibrium, a game theory Nash equilibrium, or a general equilibrium. Sometimes it's not a bad uh, intuition. And to understand those situations where it gives good guidance and where it doesn't give gu good guidance uh, is another uh, part of what I'm trying to do here. Um, I was speaking to uh, Andrea Mascolet um, last night, and we found that we actually, at, at this late age, are teaching exactly the same courses in our universities. And the undergraduate game theory course that I teach, which is a rather stiff course, begins with a discussion of what I really want you to always think about are the situations where what happens in a game are different than the situations that happen in an individual decision problem and just organize your thinking maniacally around those differences. And every time you can find a good example, latch onto it and treasure it and, and use it. So that, that's one of the themes. And the other theme is to give you an introduction to a paper that will soon be up on uh, uh, my website. What's there now is an uh, old version. Uh, I've given you my email. Uh, address um, uh, and, and this new version will will um, be finished soon and I'm going to talk a little bit about that research paper but it's very technical and uh, it is a very reductionist model but it's not easy to grab a hold of it for people who are not accustomed to the background uh, the background is chapter 15 in Mascolet, Winston and Green so I, if there are graduate students here, they should be giggling now because they've probably been tortured with this at some length, and they may have an advantage relative um, to some others. 